So they reckon there might be a dead guy in one of these pylons. <laughs> the river gods are going to have their drone by the look of it. 10.30 in the morning, tasting wine. There's a lot of water in here today. <laughs> one didn't make it unfortunately, may he rest in peace. It's not supposed to rain, it looks like it's going to. I don't know what to do. Yay! <laughs> Just don't want to lose my battle. Jordan. <gasps> this looks like a sandy beach, <laughs> but it's not. There we go, now we're floating. Eventually get going. And we're good. Okay, so taking off from Echuca this morning. <laughs> Let's go. I've got a lot of kilometres to make today. I've just had a brilliant four days in Echuca, Moama. While I was there, I put the sad news up on Facebook that I had had to leave my drone up a gum tree. And in no time, I was contacted by three locals each offering to help me get it down while I was in the area. Over the next two days we visited the site of the crash many times and after trying lots of different methods it still wouldn't come down. <laughs> Never mind, it was great to meet some new friends. <laughs> the river gods are going to have their drone by the look of it. Thank you so much Pete, Ash and Lee for giving up part of your weekend to help me out. Okay, well tonight I'm going out with Pete and Ash to sample one of the 101 palmies at the Shamrock Hotel. So, <laughs> I am definitely looking forward to this. You can't mistake Pete's car, he's got a gorgeous Winona canoe on the top. Good evening. Good evening. I also managed to fit in a day of sightseeing in the port of Echuca and sampled the delights of town in Echuca's main street. When they realised these waterways were connected, they went, maybe we could use them as a bit of a, a highway. I've got something on my mind that I need to say with my heart far gone. The Murray, the Darling, the Murray, the Golden or the Blockman, it's a close race for fifth, that depends which captain you are. This might be my favourite street corner in all of Australia. So you've got gin, chocolate and ice cream all on the same street corner. In the lolly shop. Gotta get that. Yum. Now I'm paddling between the Maidens in Discovery Park, where I stayed in Moama and the Echuca Wharf, which is about four kilometres. 
There's another gorgeous steampunk style bridge behind the modern concrete one. So apparently when they were building this bridge back in the 1840s, they had a big accident and many of the people were sent up to, um, well all of the people that were hurt were sent to Melbourne by train. When they got to Melbourne they realised one of the guys that had hurt himself was missing and that just happened to be the day that they were putting the pylons in. So they reckon there might be a dead guy in one of these pylons. Who knows? So that's the Achukamoma Ridge. Paddle steamers up on the boat set. And this one is the Pier Satellite. Aside from all the houseboats in the background, it could be 1840. <laughs> I have not made much distance today. I'm going to have to uh, put the um, pedal to the metal a little bit. Just enjoying going through Moama and Chica. It's been really good. So they are constructing a new bridge across the river, just up here, and over there. Morning tea. <laughs> oh. up to a holiday park not sure which one it is but they've made all of these cabins look like ye oldie weldy shops <laughs> great idea I've just come down here and that's the Campaspe River up there It's such a beautiful day out here. Uh, yesterday and the day before were pretty dreary. Um, <laughs> it's very lucky that today the weather has broken nice. It does mean that the nights are going to be cold, but that's absolutely fine. I'm not concerned about that at all. I just bumped into another paddler, well just actually said goodbye to another paddler who caught up with me a while ago. Uh, his name's Stuart, he's paddling from Albury to Mildura. 
Uh, so he um, he only paddles till about two o'clock in the afternoon. So he paddled with me a bit longer than he normally would, and um, he will definitely overtake me tomorrow. So there's plenty of us on the river doing this. I've made it to the sandbar, Wilson sandbar, something like that. Here is where I'm staying tonight, definitely. Slowly. Oh, geez, there's a lot of water in there. Okay. Right, well. Go put the bags up. There's a lot of water in here today. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. There is a Okay, now to put everything inside the tent. As you can see, the light's almost gone. So I'm gonna set up my transier and start cooking before I go into my tent and set everything up tonight. I was just about to go to bed when that started. About 15 minutes ago. <sighs> Everything's on. <laughs> and we're off for the day. At last. What's the time? Quarter after nine. Oh, I'm only 15 minutes later than I'd hoped. Stuart's off for the day. I just found out he has circumnavigated Australia in a sea kayak. That is insane. So look him up, his name's Stuart Truman. And now he's taken on the Murray. <laughs> if I was a kid, I would be so stoked to have that slippery dip into the river. <laughs> that is so cool. These grey days, I find a little bit um, unmotivating. I don't, I've got my podcast on, not right now, but um, as I'm paddling, 
It's the only thing that um, seems to make me consistently paddle. It's not paddle stop, paddle stop, paddle stop. <laughs> if I don't have a podcast or music on, on days like this, I don't go very far and I don't go very fast. The wind is really picking up. Um, yeah, it's, it's not great. I think I'm about to get a tailwind, which will be nice. It's been a headwind for the last little while. And I'm feeling pretty tired, I must admit. I slept really well. Uh, really well, actually, considering I knew there were people nearby, there was dogs barking all night, there was a little beep every 20 seconds. I'm assuming from one of the pumps that was across the river. I could only just hear it this morning. <sighs> yes, tailwind, nice. So the wind is actually stronger than the current now, so uh, the wind is influencing how hard it is to paddle, and I have been going slow today. <sighs> Only just over 4 k's an hour, about 4.5 k's an hour. Okay, the batteries on my headphones have run out. I have learnt to carry my little 10 milliamp, 10,000 milliamp hour battery bank with me for this very reason. Oh, this is always a dangerous exercise. Okay, so let me just shove all of that back in my dry bag. Get out of the way of the snag. Oh. So unfortunately that means all of my distraction is gone for the next hour or so while that recharges. I've saved a lot of bees today. One didn't make it unfortunately, may he rest in peace. But uh, the two of them have flown off, which is great. On the days when the river is really flat, like a mirror, the bees obviously think that the water is land and they land on it and they sink. Well, they sink so much that the fur on their bellies gets wet and then they can't take off. So all they need to do is dry out a bit, give themselves a bit of a wash, you know, they do this thing <laughs> with their proboscis and um, once they've dried out they, they can take off again and they do. If they're looking in a bad way I do tend to pull over to a snag and put them on the snag um, because bees navigate by visuals so if they don't know where they are they can't navigate back to their hive so I don't like to take them too far from where they are but if they're looking pretty good I just let them dry out on my duffel bag in front of me just found a beach that of course has private property signs all over it but it'll be fine for lunch I didn't feel like eating on the river today, so I didn't. <laughs> These cute little sparrows over here are really sweet. They're all fluffing themselves up and getting warm. Got myself my chip buddy for lunch today. When I've been in town for a while, your body gets used to your natural, your normal flows of time and space between meals and that sort of thing but as soon as you're back on the river it takes a few days for that to get back into the natural swing of things time to get back at it oh this is such a lovely beach and if i can do it without getting mud on my shoes odds are mm, 50 50 i reckon it is. All right, let's see if I can actually take off. I'm feeling a little grounded right now. Ooh, winning. Yes. Look at that. <laughs>
getting cold and it looks like it might be going to get wet. <laughs> to do because this rain looks like it's here to stay. Anyway, this is where I'm staying tonight. The Emmy Lou is taking off. life jacket in a hurry. Okay, let's do this. Uh. Alright. Let's get wet. It is cold today. I've got two thermals on my top and I'm definitely putting my wetsuit leg warmers on today. Gloves and we're off. That was a really nice campsite. So that's Paracuta Station over there, and that's where the Emmy Lou pulled up yesterday. At 21 k's to do today to get to the weir by 3 o'clock. So the time is currently quarter to 10, um, which gives me a bit of wriggle room, which is nice. Uh, I didn't want to be pushing it all the way. I didn't want to have to keep paddling constantly for five hours. I suspect I am only going to be doing four kilometers an hour today because of the wind and the fact there is no current anymore. Ah, it's a cold one today. Cold and gray. It's not supposed to rain. It looks like it's going to. That's the weather report done. <laughs> I know I talk about the weather a lot, but it does play such a big part in, in what you're doing. I, I will try not to in future. Oh man, I got, I got heaps of sleep last night and I'm still tired. <laughs> I guess that's what happens when you exercise all day. I'm not feeling strong this morning, uh, but that doesn't matter. I still have to paddle. <laughs> Clearly four days off was a bit too long in terms of losing my paddle fitness to then jump in and have to do big days again. So when I take off on Monday, I am only going to, I'm going to start slow. I'm not going to do big days at all. And we'll just we'll see what happens.
This is something I have never seen before. From all the way around there, <laughs> there are ski boat jetties the whole way along, all the way up to there. Just ahead of me over there is the Gunbow Creek entrance. I would love to do that one day, um, but not on this trip. <laughs> there are a number of portages through it. So yeah, heading straight on down the Murray now. Not for far, but for... Yay! <laughs> One of the few sheltered stretches today. Probably the last of the sun that we'll see. Okay, great news. It's 20 to 2 and I only have 5 kilometres left to get to Turumbury Weir. So our rendezvous is at 3. I was really worried I wasn't actually going to make it today. <laughs> I am really looking forward to meeting up with Dad tonight. It's probably helped me get through uh, paddling with quite sore muscles today after two days of pushing it. Oh, there's some dark looking clouds heading over. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it looks like the river is flowing that way. The wind is so strong. 1632 behind me there. I wrote down on my maps that Turumbri Weir was 1631. In fact, it's 1629. <laughs> so I've got two k's further to paddle than I thought I did. Ordinarily it wouldn't make a difference, but because I'm meeting someone, two k's on this river is taking half an hour so that's that's quite a bit different so I just had a thought uh, about um, how I was feeling as I came into Echuca last week <laughs> and how the word quit just wouldn't leave my head it did eventually <laughs> well it did that night actually um, I just needed I just needed to feel safe again I believe um, that was just too long feeling vulnerable. I could do lots of other things with my long service leave. I could have taken my caravan around half of Australia, for example, and that was one of the options I looked at. But right now, I'd prefer to be doing this. I really would prefer to be doing this. So, I'm interested to see how spending a weekend with family is going to play into that. Because this will be the first time that I've met with family since I started. I've met so many beautiful people along the way, just kind-hearted, beautiful souls. And they, and especially in Echuca, they really lifted me up. They really gave me a lot of energy to, to keep going. Adding to that, you know, yes, I'm, I am doing the right thing. It's, you know, it's not a silly thing to do and... Um, not a waste of my long service leave or any of those sorts of things that I was thinking last Friday when I was pulling into a Echuca. I'm so close to Turumbury Weir now. I'm really looking forward to catching up with them. I'm getting quite excited actually. <laughs> Oh, 
So there's the weir. There's the lock. And here is where I'm going to get out. pretty warm which means my feet are very cold okay <laughs> let's see if I can go find dad <laughs> <laughs> 